Hey everybody, this is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. We're going to take a walk today in the garden and I'm going to show you what I have planted and what still needs to be planted and things that I'm getting ready for the farmer's market which is coming up in just a couple weeks. So come on along with me and let's go for a walk. Okay, so we're going to be entering the container bed uh, garden area. Um, my husband uh, has been busy building my other container beds and I've been filling them as soon as I can get some soil in. And so we got uh, three beds done. Uh, he's got one more to put up at least. And we got a couple other things to go on in here. But anyways, so uh, my strawberries are uh, starting to really take off. And then I have my uh, purple auroch and my spinach. Got some more spinach there. I'm actually going to harvest some fresh spinach for supper tonight. Uh, harvesting a little bit of that will help continue to promote growth. And then over here um, I have uh, my carrots. Uh, I'll move these out of the way here. So over in these beds I have my carrots, um, I have some Spanish onions, I just planted this bed yesterday so they're still getting over their shock a little bit so some are still laying down. And then over here's another bed. I don't have near as much soil in this as I would like for carrots but um, they needed to be planted so I did the best I could and uh, planted them um, in the soil that I had at the moment. Over here I have um, some lettuce. I have Four Seasons lettuce and then the oak leaf lettuce which gets its name from the unique oak leaf shape. It's really cool looking. Some more lettuce and then these are collard greens and then uh, this is flame lettuce. See the beautiful red? I don't think the camera can really do justice to how beautiful red that is. It's more oak leaf. And then these are leeks. And this is plantain. This is actually wild plantain. It grows in on my property everywhere. But because there's so much foot traffic with animals and, and humans and um, it's not very sanitary uh, to try to harvest it on the ground. So I just planted some young um, plants in here and that way they'll stay nice and clean and um, I'm sure that uh, you know it's more sanitary than in getting it off the ground. These are my radishes. This is the one bed that's left um, from when we had the uh, first beds collapse. Um, this survived very well and uh, we're having more and more sprouts every day of the radishes. So we'll see how the, this continues to grow. These are all the plants that we saved when the um, container bed had collapsed. These are um, mustards. Um, I have Napa cabbage which is getting really nice and big there. Um, I have some Russian, uh, some Russian kale um, and then some Nero spinach right there. And I might end up actually transplanting some of this back into uh, the container beds once we get those done because they're pretty packed in here and um, this was kind of supposed to be just temporary until we got the beds rebuilt. But all right, like I said, plantain grows on our property like crazy. There's a couple different kinds of plantain right here in this section. We have the more rounded plantain and then we got kind of a more uh, spear shaped plantain. We also have narrow leaf plantain, which I haven't seen it um, yet, but that one is actually the best one to get because it's got more of the compounds there in the plantain plant. This is where I have um, my uh, sunflowers so far. Um, these ones are um, sunrise sunflowers. And then right here where the forks are, I actually have um, a hops vine root there. And we'll see how that does if it comes out of dormancy and then I'll grow um, up along this trellis here. Okay, as we enter the main uh, garden, I'll show you a lot of things that have changed so far. I have a lot of jugs lined up here. Um, I've been organizing my jugs as I've been slowly transplanting and stuff. So all these jugs right here are herbs and I lined them up against my herb garden that way I kind of knew that all these are herbs. 
and I'm growing most of these are for the business because I already have a huge herb bed here um, full of medicinal herbs but I do have some annual herbs like basil and parsley and oregano and marjoram that um, you know I'll need for myself as well but a lot of these are going to be for the business to sell at the farmers market <clears throat> My lilies are doing really good. This is my rose garden. Um, still needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but I've been more concentrating on all the jugs and starting to transplant those into plastic stuff for the seed market, our farmer's market, that I really haven't paid much attention to this area just yet, but it's getting there. So my roses are starting to come out of dormancy. My sedums come out of dormancy. Um, look at the size of that rhubarb it's huge and it's already putting out a um, seed stem right there so I'm gonna have to trim that because we don't need it bolting already and then these are daffodils that are just finished blooming and I also have a couple of hyacinths that are tucked in there which is kind of interesting I didn't even know that I had hyacinth until uh, I saw them bloom last week we're getting our beds situated. This is um, going to be where my tomatoes and then my corn are going to be. And you see I still have jugs there. This is my flower and multi-purpose. I have uh, lettuce and things in here. But this is, um, yeah, rooster's pretty excited this morning. This is our pollinator friendly bed. I put in a lot of flowers that the pollinators like and uh, some other plants. So um, it's strictly basically for the pollinators. But I tuck in some other plants in there if I have room. Like I said, I have some lettuces in here um, and I have some borage in here as well. The tansy at the end of this bed is just getting huge. I planted this last year because um, I was told it's a great crop to have in your garden. It is a medicinal herb. It can be um, somewhat invasive, but I'm told that it's very easy to keep in check. So we'll see how that goes. This is where I planted my um, beets and my kohlrabi, and I have it covered of course because we don't want the uh, the cabbage moss to come in and and start chomping on the kohlrabi and stuff <clears throat> and more jugs here these ones are for my baker creek tomatoes which i am <laughs> which i'm growing to um, save the seeds for for baker creek so i do have a couple sprouts those two jugs back there have started to sprout that's why i set them away so i can so i know that those two have sprouted and then these ones we're still waiting on and then i have two fig trees that i'm waiting to see if they're going to come back as you can see i still have jugs that need to be transplanted yet and i'll probably do that later on today Really starting to thin out our jugs here and get um, the garden really going. I got my other arbor moved over. <clears throat> this is where I have um, dino kale right here in front. And then back is um, onions. And then all my brassicas are under here as far as cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, uh, and broccoli. And most of these are my corn and my beans, which are just now starting to sprout. And then I also have over here um, jugs of tomatoes and bell peppers. We're going to go into the greenhouse and I'm going to show you what I have in there. Um, they're basically, uh, I used to have my seedlings in totes, or some of my seedlings in totes, excuse me, because we ran out of jugs, um, but the totes were not working at all. They were not keeping a consistent moisture, and um, it was just not going to be um, a good outcome. So we went ahead and we moved those seedling trays in here. All right.
right so this is my greenhouse it's really really tiny it doesn't hold a lot of heat and so I don't really use it that much for uh, seeds starting but like I said I had to move um, my seed flats that I had in totes in here because where they were was not going to work and if I hope to have any success I need to move them in a more controlled environment <clears throat> and so we moved them in here and I'm glad that I did because instead of having um, duds we have quite a few seedlings these are um, all tomatoes here these are brand new I just planted these but um, those are all tomatoes and then I <clears throat> have some more tomatoes there my turmeric never did grow so that's kind of just an empty flat now it never did sprout <clears throat> And then here is um, peppers. Uh, I have some red and green and orange bell peppers that, that germinated here instead of being in the tote. This is what uh, one of the totes looked like. And then uh, it just, like I said, it did not keep even moisture and it just was not working out. So I moved everything in here. <clears throat> then I planted some squash in here because. Um, I knew squash would germinate really quickly and these I'm actually going to be selling at the farmers market so I have them in flats so that um, people can um, purchase them and then um, my hot peppers I brought in for the business as well I do have some that are outside still um, but for the business I needed to make sure that they were germinating and gain a good size so I could sell them at the farmers market so um, I brought them in here uh, to help um, move them along a little bit more since it does get a little warmer in here than it is outside so we do have some jalapenos that have sprouted no cayenne peppers um, I might replant those I'm not sure I don't have a lot of time to get those um, going but um, I might actually grow some inside on a heat mat and then bring them out here. <clears throat> so I got um, those going on. And then I brought my chicory in here. <laughs> this chicory was growing pretty good. Um, it was really nice and I was really excited to see it growing. But um, then some type of bug got in there and it just mowed the seedlings right down to the dirt. But thankfully, um, it didn't kill them, and I still have seedlings that are growing. So I just brought it in here um, to just give it a break from whatever I was eating it. And I just thought it was kind of interesting because the chicory, out of my two, uh, 312 odd jugs, my chicory was the only one that had any kind of pest damage. So that's why that's in here. Okay. So the last big reveal in the greenhouse is my loofahs. These are the loofahs that I was growing indoors, um, but I brought them out when it got a little bit warmer in the greenhouse, and I've been using this to cover it when it got really cold. It did get some frost damage, not much, because it was in here, and again, I protected it with the, this, the top of this tote here. Um, but I'm going to be getting ready to plant um, probably two of these plants today and then keep the other ones just in case um, you know they don't take. Our last hard frost um, was yesterday um, but you know that's not an exact science and so I will be planting a couple of these plants today but uh, again I'll keep a couple of them in here for about another week or two just in case uh, something happens to the first two. Here in 5B, um, you need to really have a good head start on loofahs if you want to get a harvest that you can actually dry and cure in time. Okay, look at all these seedlings. These are all petunias, and these all came from jugs, and then I transplanted them. I've been slowly transplanting, well not slowly, but I've been transplanting a lot of my seedlings from the jugs into these seed flats so I can get them ready for the farmer's market. Uh, I was really, really surprised. My husband was really, really surprised. Um, I had two jugs that I basically almost dumped the entire contents of the seed packets in. And so they were heavily, heavily overseeded. So as they were a little bit bigger, I just clump planted them into the seed flats for now. And then when they get a little bit bigger, uh, this one's almost there, and the roots are more established, I'm going to go ahead and split these up into um, their own little cell packs. 
but I just thought that was really cool. I think I said I probably have around 500 petunias um, in these couple flats. I also have some more flats outside, which I'll show you in just a minute. Okay, so uh, for those of you who have been following me either on Facebook or here on YouTube this year, you know that I've been doing a lot of jugs, not only just for the uh, house, but also for our business, so we could try to sell seedlings at the farmer's market this year. And I just wanted to show you what that is looking like so far. Now, I'm in Zone 5B, Central Michigan. So it's still cold. Um, cold weather crops are the big thing right now. Uh, warm weather crops will start going in the ground in a couple weeks. But uh, I just want to show you from winter sowing what I have as far as crops right now. All right, so these are all my seed flats that I have started so far from the jugs. Look at all that beautiful lettuce. These were all winter sown lettuces. They're actually doing almost better in here than they are in my uh, beds. These are the same lettuces I have in my raised beds in the container, in the containers. And look at this oak leaf. Isn't that gorgeous? And then I have red cabbage and some Brussels sprouts. Um, I have basically all the cold weather crops here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, some more broccoli and things. And they're really starting to look good, really starting to take off. When I first transplanted them, they weren't looking too hot, but now they're really, really, really taking off. Here's some herbs that I just transplanted. Again, I tend to overseed all my seeds. And so the herbs were just big enough where I could transplant them. I have thyme and lavender. Lavender was another surprise crop. In four years, I've never been able to grow lavender or rosemary, and I have both those um, plants that have been uh, grown successfully this year in the jugs. So I have lavender and thyme, I have sage and rosemary, um, oregano, and then I um, have some mustards, the sorrel. This sorrel is really, really, really beautiful. I don't know if you guys can see how pretty that is. And then I have some parsley. And what's this? Some goji berries. I had quite a few of my goji berry seeds germinate. So I'll actually be able to share some goji berries. And then I have got, this is chamomile. And some cameo and some mustards. I have some leeks going on. Some elephant dill in the back. Cilantro. More mustard. This is calendula. And then I'm also propagating my own mints from my own mint plants. So I have in here I have some lemon balm, some whorehound, some bee balm. I have some chocolate mint, and I also have some spearmint that I've been uh, propagating. And then for those who have been watching my chicken journey, this is my elderberry bush, one of them anyway. For those who have been watching my chicken journey, these are the babies that I have this year. Um, they're getting quite big. It's almost time to start acclimating them. Um, we're not sure if uh, the other flock will take them yet, but we have in this pen, we have six Brahmas, three Bard Rocks, and four Aracanas. So yeah, they're getting to be a good size and it's gonna, probably going to try to acclimate them um, next week and see if the other flock will accept them. We haven't had luck yet. Um, if we're unable to get the two flocks to combine, my husband will just make this pen larger and these guys will just stay here by themselves. We're not sure about this blackbird here. And that's my husband's favorite right there. That is Buffy. <laughs> Isn't she beautiful? And then Little Red. So yeah. And last but not least, these are the peas that I had transplanted, oh, three weeks ago. I have these ones here. 
and then these ones over here so yeah so I've been doing a lot a lot of work out here I have a lot more to do um, gardening never ends once you get going and even in the winter time it never ends because you're uh, plant planning your next year so um, I just thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed the update um, and I'll try to continue to keep you guys updated as much as possible it's really busy around here on the homestead so trying to get videos uploaded on a timely fashion sometimes sometimes uh, doesn't happen as much as easily as I'd like so thank you so much for watching everybody I hope that you wherever you are you are blessed have a nice day bye